This is the India-China border, one of the longest interstate borders in the world. Also the only land border of China that has not been defined, not demarcated on maps, not delineated on the ground. Every movement along this line defines Asia security dynamics. Where does the conflict start? Sometime in 1914. Representatives of China, Tibet and Britain gather in Shimla. They want to settle the borders between China and British India. But China refuses to sign the deal. Why? Because it allows Tibet to be an autonomous region. Tibet and Britain sign the deal. The 550 mile long McMahon line is established. It becomes the legal border between India and China. Fast forward to 1962, independent India is led by Jawaharlal Nehru. At the helm of affairs in China is Mao Zedong. The two countries are tussling over the border. There are skirmishes. India's move to grant asylum to Dalai Lama has not gone down too well with China. China also has its eyes on Aksai Chin. It is integral for connecting Tibet to Xinjiang. War breaks out on the 20th of October 1962. Chinese troops cross the McMahon line. They take up positions in Indian territory, capture Rezang La in the Western Theater, Tawang in the East. The war lasts for a month. India loses more than 1,000 men, 2,000 others are taken prisoners of war. Also lost is 14,500 square kilometers of territory. China reveals its casualty years later. Beijing claims it lost around 800 men. A ceasefire is signed on the 20th of November 1962. China withdraws to its claimed LAC. This war scars the ties between the world's two most populous nations. It changes India's perception of China. New Delhi realizes that Beijing cannot be trusted. The psychological wounds of the war resurface repeatedly in the years that follow. Cut to 1967, Sikkim. Indian and Chinese troops find themselves eyeball to eyeball. India is constructing a fence at Nathula. The Chinese are not happy. A scuffle breaks out. What begins with stone pelting results in the Chinese troops opening fire. In September 1967, 88 Indian soldiers are killed in action. The Chinese lose 300 men. The next month, the two sides engage in a duel in Chola in Sikkim. Some 20 years pass. 1986, India grants statehood to Arunachal Pradesh. The Chinese protest. Sumdorong Chu becomes a flashpoint. The Chinese cross the LAC. They build permanent structures, including a helipad. India moves troops to the border. The build-up is eerily similar to 1962. But neither India nor China want a war. China is forced to back off one year later, September 2014. Chinese troops deploy heavy machinery in Demchok. They want to build a road inside the Indian territory. India retaliates by camping opposite the PLA. The standoff coincides with Xi Jinping's three-day visit to India. India raises the matter with Xi. Chinese troops withdraw after a 20-day standoff. Fast forward to 2017, Chinese troops try to construct a road near the Doklam Plateau. This territory belongs to Bhutan. It is close to an Indian highway. Indian troops step in to prevent this construction. New Delhi warns Beijing that the construction will impact the status quo. The Doklam Tri-Junction becomes the spot for a 72-day standoff. Weeks of talks later, China is forced to remove its troops. Currently, India and China are engaged in a standoff in Ladakh. Flashpoints, Pangongso, the Galwan Valley, and the hot springs. Also unresolved are two big disputes, Aksai Chin, an Indian territory that is currently under the control of the Chinese. The land grab, 40,000 square kilometers. In the eastern flank, China has its eyes on 92,000 square kilometers of Arunachal Pradesh. It seizes every opportunity to rename parts of the Indian state. 